welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning on our 2022 results and financial outlook. So can I start off first with an overview of 2022, which you know, at a very high level was very positive for us. We made strong financial progress. Our revenue growth, 40%, was ahead of initial market expectations and, and really pleasing, really showing the traction we've had during the year with customers, particularly in enterprise level engagements, um, and how that is now starting to show in the ongoing shift to subscription model and delivering on an enhanced revenue visibility now through multi-year contracts, uh, which are leading into our order book. And I'll talk about uh, in a bit further detail later on about our revenue shift to subscription and the order book. During 2022, we were really pleased to make significant leap forward with our DXRX platform. And Ryan will be talking to that in a bit more detail later. It's utility for pharma, lab partners, our plans there with our strategic accelerated investment in our strategy and how we're integrating with our customers' commercial needs. Finally, a couple other points. We obviously talked about in January uh, of this year, our plans to accelerate in our investment to meet uh, the growing demand from our pharma customers and the expanding market. We'll touch on in a bit more detail around what, what's involved there uh, and about the uh, and how that's going to serve us the rapidly expanding opportunity we're seeing within the, broadly the precision medicine market, uh, more specifically the area of commercialization we're working on. I'd like to just talk to the operational dashboard here. So some of the key highlights brought out in the RNS this morning, which I think are really important to demonstrate the momentum we've had during 2022 and what we're seeing translate into 2023 as well. We have two now multi-brand enterprise level engagements that was up from none in 2021 and our continuing negotiations and discussions with our customer base as to more of these enterprise level engagements. We now see 76% of our revenue from platform-based solutions up from 60% in 2021, really demonstrating, I think, the shift post our platform development and launch from Diasutics as a commercialization service partner to a tech-led platform-based pharma service company. We had 56 pharma brands engaged across 43 customers in 2022. That's up. We had 56 brands in 2021, but across a smaller customer base. Again, the revenue per customer brand increasing from about 0.25 million to 0.35 million. Again, demonstrating along with the enterprise level engagements, our increased level of engagement with our pharma customers. And to that, we now have 26 brands with lifetime revenue over $1 million, up from $19 million in 2021. Ryan will talk to our launch, our enriched platform functionality, and how we've integrated to pharma um, customer systems later. Um, and we've increased the number of employees up 22 from 129 to 151 at the end of 2022 and continue to invest in that area. I'll just cover off some of the key financials, of which I'll go into a bit more detail later. We've seen revenue pleasingly increase to 19.5 million, so up 40%, 26% on a constant currency basis. That is driven by uh, a higher spend per brand achieved during the year, also those enterprise level engagements. I think more impressive, though, is the shift to subscription and to multi-year contracts. So subscriptions now make up 35% of our revenue base. We will continue to drive that forward through the accelerated investment in our strategy. And we've seen the order book increase ninefold to 16.9 million. We saw EBITDA increase 56% to 3.6 million. That's an EBITDA margin of 18%, up slightly on last year. And finally, really pleased to see we finished the year, really strong balance sheet and a cash position of 19.8 million about equal with the position last year and with no debt. We announced in January 2023 that we'd layered in multi-year enterprise level engagements with our pharma customers. So we ended 2022 with two multi-year, multi-disease data subscription contracts with two top 10 global pharma companies. Those contracts, Cumulative, had a value of over $7 million over a period of two years. So that was made up of contracts ranging between 
12 and 24 months on a subscription only basis. Those have really been developed through our longstanding relationships with pharma. Um, we've made um, lots of strides, lots of progress in our platform-based solutions uh, and in our data insights offering, particularly in Signal. Uh, and that has really uh, given us the opportunity now to start to embed ourselves within pharma data provision uh, and more widely some of the enterprise level engagements and advisory services, which we hope to layer onto these agreements in, uh, in later years. If I could just add to this slide, uh, one of the things we're seeing is that Signal on the left here is really acting as a key product for us, the vanguard of our offering. And as we engage with clients, they typically are taking Signal first, but we're seeing a pull through of the other products, many of which we've been selling for some time. But due to the investments in data and the timeliness of that data now allows us to offer these as part of the subscription driving some considerable value add to those enterprise level deals. So we talked about our strategy acceleration as part of our trading update in January. And I just wanted to go back and revisit that and just confirm exactly what that entails. As we mentioned in our RNS, we've been listening to our customers. So we engaged a, a third party to help us understand our customer requirements as well as internal um, research around what customers are doing and, and questionnaires. Um, that's led to, I'd say, a four-pillar approach to our strategy acceleration, which is documented here. So we're looking to invest in enriching our data and our platform products. We think we've got a really strong data insights solution now all available through the platform. And Ryan's going to talk to that in a little bit later. But we're also looking to embed more of our engagement and where we can, our advisory service solutions within our platform we're also looking to invest in our data, so that's geographically expand into areas um, which we think we could get more data, particularly in diseases which are non-oncology and, and rare disease, um, which are typically not our, our, our area of focus in prior years. Um, but in 2022, 20%, roughly 20% of our revenue is now coming from non-oncology areas. So that's an area we want to expand into further. We're looking to invest in our platform scale and capability it's certainly working sufficiently well for now and our customer requirements, but we have high growth ambitions and we want to invest it in the platform, its capability. So that's through AI, that's through automation and its ability to deliver more value to our customers. Final two points, our lab network and our lab community is really important to us. We want to invest in that. That doesn't just mean the number of labs. That means coverage of labs geographically. And it means coverage of labs on areas perhaps outside of oncology, which, again, has been our main area of focus, but where we see significant precision medicine growth potential in the future. Finally, we're looking to transform our customer experience. This is something that has really come through strongly in our own research, as well as those done by third parties supporting us. Pharma really values us, our expertise, our thought leadership in precision medicine, and we want to invest in customer service to really support them so that we can be that outsource uh, tech provider of commercialization services to them. What that all means is that we will be investing and we'll see a net cash outflow over the next two years. So that's 23 and 24 of 7 million. Um, that we put self-imposed our own guardrails around that. So we won't go below a minimum cash holding of 12 million. And during that period of investment, and that's both uh, capital and PL investment, uh, we will remain EBITDA profitable, albeit at a, at a lesser value than we are now, but we'll remain EBITDA profitable in the short term uh, to be able to exploit longer term um, margin expansion. This slide is probably self explanatory, but why are we doing the accelerated investment in our strategy? And the four point here probably ring very true. So we want to increase our midterm rate of revenue growth and high quality revenues. What we mean by that is more subscription. So drive towards initially a 70% subscription level, hopefully by 2025, and then push up to 80% in later years. We want to expand our margins. We think GP margin is representative of what we can achieve now. But I mean, in terms of an EBITDA margin, 
We want to be able to scale the business better to really meet customer demands and the demands of the increasing precision medicine market. And ultimately, we want to drive further shareholder value. So why are we doing this now? I think it's a really important question. We start the year 2023 with really strong balance sheet and really good financial momentum from 2022, which we're seeing flow into 2023 as well through our customer base, which is predominantly pharma with some diagnostic companies as well. Post-COVID, we saw a rapid shift in the farm sector towards digital service channels. My time at Argument, I saw that within the clinical trial space, and that is true of post-clinical trials into the commercialization phase of pharma projects. Um, we're seeing growing customer demands, and that, that, that's evident in the numbers um, in our RNS, including you know, the 26 pharma um, brands now that over the lifetime have spent over $1 million dollars Um, We have two brands now that are over $6 million of lifetime brand spend. We want to maintain and maximize our first mover advantage and our competitive edge, which is really important. We think we're the only provider of end-to-end commercialization solutions. We want to stay there. We want to enable the platform to keep that momentum going. Yeah, please. Um, Just to add on the middle two in particular, in my role, I spend a lot of time talking to customers and serving them use our solutions. I can't emphasize enough the demand that's there and our customers are are working very closely with us to to discuss where they're going, what they want, where where we fit into that. And and it actually makes our life easier to to set our roadmap and our investments uh, to really sit alongside their own strategy. Um, and as, as Nick pointed out, we, we've got that traction through making changes and investing in our data solutions, which we believe we're the first to do. And, and it's really set us apart in the market uh, that we exist in today. Thanks, Sam. So I'll go into a bit more detail on the financial results for 2022. So really pleasing. Since the platform launch in 2020, The graph on the left here just demonstrating, I think, the the detraction we've seen in top line growth over that period. So over that period, that's a 24% compound annual growth rate. In 2022, that's a 40% increase to 19.5 million. On a constant currency basis, that's 26% growth. And really, that's been achieved through the higher spend per brand that we're being able to extract from pharma and, and Ryan talked about how we're meeting their needs and staying in touch with their requirements. 26 brands now have lifetime spend over $1 million. That revenue growth, I think probably more impressive has been maintaining that growth while actually transitioning to a multi-year subscription led approach being a platform led business. We now have 35% of our revenues generated through subscription and we've seen the order book increase over ninefold now to 16.9 million at the end of 2022 up from only 1.7 million that's giving us significant visibility and i guess confidence to be able to invest in our strategy the 10.9 million the orange block in the bottom right graph that is contracted revenue at the start of 2022 that we realized in 2023 and that is giving us visibility over circa 40 to 45 percent of our guided revenue number for 2023. All of this aided by our deeper relationship with pharma, those enterprise level engagements, which were in discussions with, with pharma. And we want to try and build upon and hopefully we can talk about let more about later in the year as those uh, potentially come online. And yet yeah, this top line performance and momentum we've seen in 2022 and in the beginning of 2023 has really given us the confidence to drive forward our accelerated investment in our strategy. So I've just summarized on the left hand side here the PL. I wanted to talk about some key points here. Firstly, demonstrating the platform growth, its potential and its profitability at a margin level there. So gross profit increased to 16.7 million, the margin staying broadly in line. I think representative of where we'd expect them to be as we continue to invest in 2023. We'd expect our gross profit margins to be in that 85 to high 80 percent bracket. Um, That really depends on the uh, the mix of um, 
solutions um, between insight, which is data, engagement solutions, and our historic advisory solutions. Uh, but I think in that bracket is realistic and really showing um, the scalability potential of the platform. Just talking to the EBITDA, so we're up 56% on EBITDA to 3.6 million at an EBITDA margin of 18%, so slightly up on 2021. Again, I think that's really impressive, really pleasing to see, bearing in mind we had this significant shift to subscription in the year. So some of those revenues, which we might have realised at a point in time up front, have now been smoothed out over a longer period of time. But of course, the benefit of that has been the significant increase in the order book and afford visibility. We're obviously looking to accelerate investment in our strategy to help us realise a longer term um, and more enhanced EBITDA margin, uh, one that we feel should be more in line with um, tech-based companies. Finally, just to highlight here, profitability and its flow down into cash flow and our cash position. So we were profitable at a PBT level, the cash generated from operations strong at 3.7 million, free cash flow positive at 0.1 million. And I think that is a key milestone, something that's really giving us, again, the confidence to be able to invest in our strategy, along with the fact that we end the year of 19.8 million in cash. After the SBB event post year end, we have now distributed that across three institutions um, to diversify away from some of the concentration risk we had at the year end. Um, as there continues to be uh, some uncertainty, I guess, within the broader banking environment, but but happy now that um, we have distributed that cash across uh, three you know, tier one financial institutions. Finally, on the finance section, I just wanted to talk about our investment in growth and scale, both in 2022, how that compares to 21, and just lead into a bit more as to what that means for 2023 and onwards. We saw overall investment in our platform and in our data of 4.8 million, slightly down on 2021 of 5.4 million, but really looking to ramp up that overall level of investment into 2023 now and deploy some more of those significant cash funds that we have. We saw investment in our platform scale and capability in 2022. I've analysed here both the the capitalised element and the element that's expensed through the P&Ls. So that was 2.4 million of capitalised and on top of that, an additional 0.2 million of expense. We're looking to see that proportion shift into 2023 and future years. We're expecting to expense more of that platform development as the platform starts to reach maturity. The data investment in 2022 was 2.2 million, similar to 2021 of 2.1 million. This is an area that we're targeting investment of double the current rate and is really an important area for us to start to expand our offering outside of oncology geographically and to increase what we call the, the, the longitudinal nature of the data. So we want to, to get more what we call Rx data so to understand some of the prescribing results of the testing data. Um, this will, we also want to tokenize that data and that will make it intrinsically more valuable to pharma. Our data sets will have uh, more patient um, history in it effectively. That will be de-identified, but through to tokenization, that data set will be able to be linked to other pharma data sets, uh, which makes it, as I say, uh, more intrinsically valuable um, for pharma to link up or for potentially for us to link up within our own platform. <laughs> Finally, we invested in our headcount. Headcount increased 22 to uh, 151 people as at the end of 2022. So 18 of that 22 was headcount increase across uh, what I call core, but really our, our driving um, commercial and platform um, technology teams. So that's across sales and marketing, our customer service and delivery and technology teams are probably no surprise there that that, that investment is very much um, linked and, and in line with where we're looking to invest into 2023 as well. Just just on the slide before we move off, on the data breadth and depth, you know, that is an area where we compete 
probably most significantly, and uh, to be able to increase that coverage and the depth of our data, um, again, goes back to um, what our clients are asking for, but also further differentiates us from competition. Uh, we're already, we believe, market leaders as it pertains to the, the coverage of our diagnostic data. Uh, this will set us apart even further. And on to the next point, um, the ability to tokenize that data uh, allows better interoperability of other data sets. And, and also um, the timeliness of that data is important. We're the only provider that we know of and uh, that can offer a daily data subscription to our clients. Uh, next best is weekly. So uh, again, that investment is is um, offering us an ability to be stand out amongst the crowd. Moving on to the platform section. For those of you who have been following us for a while, you'll notice that we've done a lot of work to try to streamline and simplify our solution lineup. And really we think about our business now as platform subscription model on the left, these two boxes, and then our consulting and advisory or more traditional services, which are still very important, particularly from a thought leadership perspective. But I'm gonna focus on the two boxes on the left are our insight solutions, basically our data solutions. And we provide data to our customers at a lab level, helping them understand the lab landscape, the physician level, which physicians are testing, who they're testing and how. Testing rates tracker, which is a more macro view of the market and what's going on. And then we have our lead product, which is our physician signal. You'll note that we launched that in Q421. And that's a big part of what drove the success of last year. And we've seen significant pull through of the other products, particularly the other inside solutions. Our engagement solutions are, are new to us in many ways. I'll talk more in a moment as to how we're leveraging our lab network to really uh, allow us to drive additional value there. Um, but these are very synergistic with our data solutions in that where we are identifying um, stakeholders, et cetera, the data, the engagement solutions allow us to uh, act on that data, reach out, engage uh, through various channels. Everything in these two boxes, we are subscription first model, and that's what's driving our ability to offer a uh, joined up solution at an enterprise level. Quick summary of some uh, platform activity through the year. We have now got over 30 of our signal products uh, subscriptions added in 2022. That's up from just two that we brought in Q4 and 21. We have five solutions now available on our platform, Signal being one of them, but joined by the others you saw on the previous slide. Again, that's a big move from 21, where really we were just piloting those at, at that time. The third metric here is an interesting one, and I think really important for us to get across where we are providing data now, particularly our weekly or daily data subscriptions. We are integrated right into our customer CRM platforms. So 17 of our pharma clients, that's 17 different pharma companies, take our data and have automated the integration into their uh, critical path platforms. And, and this is basically their CRM tool that their own sales reps, their own key account managers are using to go out and engage the market. And that, that means that we are um, a much more uh, uh, critical provider for them. And that integration is something that is allowing us to become a lot more sticky with these clients. It's, it's, it's a work stream which we believe when we're integrated in, makes us harder to be removed. And then the last metric is just around the revenue, uh, 14.9 million revenue generated by platform products, which was 76% of our 2022 revenue, up from 8.3 in 2021. You've heard me talk about Signal again, just to close out on that. It's very much our lead product. We typically are engaging and, and opening new opportunities using this product. It has multiple utility across both the pharma development 
and then post-launch pipeline. And uh, we see continued traction through 2023 uh, already this year with this product. And as I said, we've already got 30 uh, operational. Those that are, um, quite, a, quite a few of those are over 12 months uh, running now and the vast majority have renewed into their second year. When we talk about our lab network, we've continued to grow our lab network through 2022. We expanded our network to now include 851 laboratories across 38 different countries. That's up from 561 in 33 countries at the end of 2021. And our lab network provides multiple different opportunities for us. One is our thought leadership and our proximity to the lab is something that is absolutely valued by our customer and again sets us apart. Uh, the data provision from these labs has been a core part of our strategy since pre-IPO. Um, and, and now we're evolving that relationship to offer other services on the back of that lab network, uh, which I'll talk to in a moment. But continued growth and, and, and big plans to grow that network through 23. The growth will slow down. You can see that you know our growth from 2021 to 22 is slower than it was from 20 to 21. You know that's going to happen as we start to hit a critical mass there and are more selective around the laboratories that we want to bring into the network. One of the things that we realized through 2021 and 2022 was that the lab network that we were building largely to provide us with data, the data that ultimately feeds our inside solutions and our signal product. We also realized that there was a large appetite from our customers to leverage that lab network as a marketing channel. And therefore we have developed some products and solutions we call these our engagement solutions, to really diversify the use of that lab network. We'd already built it, we're building it, we're investing in it. Now we can provide additional services over the top of that network, basically uh, pushing marketing information back down towards the labs that, that our pharma clients are very keen to engage with to make them aware of market evolution and new products coming, new biomarkers, new tests. Today, pharma don't have a ready-made network or an ability to interact with these labs. So our network, instead of us pulling uh, information and data from it as we've been doing, we're now trying to also push information out and we're finding high levels of engagement both on our lab side because they actually very much value that information and being brought into that information flow, but also our clients are valuing a very streamlined and cost-effective way for them to get information out there the alternative being for them hiring a field force to go out and actually call on labs, which has significant cost and operational rigor attached to it. Just summing up on our outlook, Nick talks to, and, and I hope I've added to the accelerated investment in our strategy in order to expedite our growth and seize the market opportunity. The client feedback is strong. The market excitement around our data in particular and now our new engagement solutions is driving us to want to invest there, go into new markets and really drive home the advantage that we feel we have. We want to pursue the shift to multi-year enterprise engagement. It has obvious advantages to our business around the ability to generate revenue into the future, build that order book and, and have those sustainable and reliable subscriptions. Moving beyond oncology is really is following the market. We're looking at orphan disease, but also other diseases, inflammatory, neurological, et cetera, where a biomarker first uh, companion diagnostic approach is commonly being taken now. And again, we just want to be there at the right time for when those uh, therapeutic areas wake up and, and, and really leverage the opportunity that precision medicine affords. And lastly, we continue to try to position ourselves as the primary commercialization partner for pharma or biotechs who are launching a precision medicine. Precision medicine has been the hook we've hung our hat on for forever since we since Peter started the business back in 2007. We will remain faithful to that precision medicine market. It's where we're known and where we're well understood. And it's 
uh, a, a key part for us to be in such an exciting space. As it grows, we want to grow alongside. Thank you.